All right, so I just wanted to do a lecture on the lab that we went over in class over a moment of inertia. And this is mainly um, for the uh, A-Day class when we had, uh, we were having some uh, difficulties with the formula. And I just wanted to show you, um, uh, we ended up, I think, computing a mass of, I think it was three grams or so that we would add to, to both ends of the, uh, meter sticks so that it behaved like the meter stick does with the 500s close to your hand. So anyways, I went through and, and recalculated uh, and was just a little more um, specific about where the masses were. Um, I think we assumed that the masses were five centimeters away from our hand, and I went back and repeated the experiment and measured them and they're about 7.5 centimeters because I measured to the middle of the mass. And the same thing is true when the mass is brought at the end. I think we assumed they were 50 centimeters away, but that was uh, too far because, because we have to use the, when you tape the masses at the end, you have to measure to the middle of the, the mass. So it was actually shorter than that, 46 centimeters. And then I went and repeated the calculations and because in the moment of inertia formula being mr squared, the r gets squared, which is means that those those effects of those of those distances uh, is going to be even more important than say the mass uh, because of the squaring effect. And anyways, you can see the uh, i value. I think in class we assumed about 0.01, and it was actually a little greater than that for uh, when the masses were close in the two 500s, right? And then uh, I think we assumed 0.2 for when the masses were um, further out for the moment of inertia. And uh, it was actually a little larger than that, almost 0.22. So does that matter? Does it make a difference? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think everything makes a difference here when we're dealing with um, such small numbers. And uh, in calculating the mystery mass, if I scroll down here, you can see that um, with, these, with this new moment of inertia of 0.0140, calculating the mystery mass out at the ends, it puts it um, from greater than what we had in class of 3.5 grams to around 13.5 um, uh, grams as I'm in kilograms. Just spotted that error. Let me fix that. <clears throat> So yeah, so it it is a, uh, a a decent amount of difference there, just from those small differences in our position, right? Um, of 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 where those masses, where we consider them to be, uh, and this is closer to what we've had previous years. I want to say it was similar to twenty grams is what I've had previous years, and so this thirteen and a half is closer than that. But but it, but it's it's you know. Um, it's error. It's uh, it's not too big of a difference. We don't have to repeat our lab or, or change our answer. Um, I'm fine with where it is. Our math is correct. Our technique is correct. Um, and so I just wanted to point this out because I wanted to uh, see if it made a big difference, right? I thought I just thought three and a half was a little small, and it is, but but it but it's not worth changing our 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 data or going back and doing it again. Okay, so um, <clears throat> let's see, where do we leave off? Uh, I think probably question um, 10, because I think in 9 you do reconstruct the new apparatus, say with the 13.5 gram masses at the end, uh, and, and hopefully uh, the effort is the same, right? Um, so we would hope that the effort... Obviously, we'd have to do it in the lab. Is the same to uh, to angularly accelerate. Um, <clears throat> and then it says compare the total mass. So obviously, um, m total is going to be uh, larger 
uh, for the 500s, right? M total uh, 500, I'll just, I'll just call it that, is going to be greater than M total uh, 13 and a half. <clears throat> okay. Then it says, make a general, statement, a general statement describing the relationship between an object's moment of inertia and the amount of effort it takes to rotate the object about its center. So this is just getting at Newton's second law, right? And I can let you make this statement. But we know F equals MA, A equals F over M, right, for linear motion. And then for angular acceleration, we can say torque equals I alpha. And we can uh, rearrange that and get um, <clears throat> uh, alpha equals torque over moment of inertia. All right, and so we'll use that um, relationship right there to answer this question. All right, number 11, explain how it is possible for two objects to have the same mass and different moment of inertias. Um, to have the same mass and different moment of inertias. Uh, this is what we saw uh, with I2 and I1, right? So um, I'll just write that down, but you got to answer the question. Um, but that's what we saw earlier. When we put the 500s uh, close in and, and we put the 500s further out, right? They had the same mass. It was two 500 masses with uh, the ruler and um, or the meter stick, and we saw that I1 was much smaller than I2. And then they both had two 500 gram masses and a meter stick, right, being spun. So uh, you can talk about that with your explanation. Number 12, explain how it's possible for two objects to have different masses in the same moment of inertia. And this is what we saw with, um, we'll say it was... Uh, uh, I1, right, and the mystery setup. So I'll just make a note of there. This is I1 and mystery masses, which are no longer mysteries, right, the 13.5. Uh, so, so you can describe. So make sure you describe down here. I'll just write that. You describe. You describe. And it suggests a reason for why. You know, why is that, right? What, what, what does moment of inertia, uh, um, what does it rely on? What is it, why is it that it's the same for question 12? And why is it that it's different for, for question 11? Number 13, use the meter stick alone. Hold it at the center with one hand and keep it and test its rotational inertia. Now move your hand 10 centimeters from the center and test it again. Keep moving your hand outward uh, for the end of the meter stick and, and, and test the rotational inertia. So you can even do this with your pencil just sitting at your desk. And you should see, uh, you should notice a difference, right? That it rotates differently the farther you hold the pencil right away from uh, the the center of its the center of the object the center of the pencil. Um, so if it's yeah, so how how do you think this will affect the moment of inertia? So think of it this way. Let me rephrase the question. So what you're commenting on here is if you spin the pencil say about its center versus spinning the pencil about its end, right? So um, you can think of it that way. So center versus end. I'll just write some notes here. And talking about how, how the moment of inertia is different. And you can talk about uh, how the angular acceleration is different. Uh, but I, I don't know if it asks you to do that. All right, so explain explain why. How MOI is different and explain. All right, so let's go to the next one here. Mm. <clears throat> go a little smaller there. 
All right, next one says the parallel axis theorem allows one to calculate the moment of inertia of an object that is rotated around an axis other than the one that goes through the center of the object. It states that I parallel axis equals I center of mass plus MD squared, where D is the distance from the axis rotation to the object's center of mass. Use this theorem to calculate the uh, moment of inertia of the meter stick at various points up to and including the point on the end where you held onto it. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, show these calculations and results. All right, how do we want to do this? Um, okay, let's try it like this. So if we rotated the object, say about, um, So here's a meter stick, here's the center of mass, and we're gonna rotate the object right here. So we know, maybe I can use a different color for that, maybe some green, yeah. All right, <clears throat> I don't know if I like that. <clears throat> We'll just do it like that. Okay, so we know that the axis of rotation is, is right at that point. Um, we'll say it is, uh, I don't know, it is 25 centimeters away. All right, so <clears throat> we remember from last class that if the, um, mm, let me, this draw it a little lower down here we remember that if the axis of rotation is right at the center of mass right then we know the eye of the meter stick is equal to one twelfth ml squared, right? And so we want to see how that changes when we bring the axis of rotation out away from the the center of uh, the meter stick. So if we look back up here, then. Um, what what did happen there? Well, using the using the um, the formula we were given right here, it says I parallel axis equals I center of mass plus m d squared. transfer that down there <clears throat> we can then uh, call this well um, we can say that I parallel axis uh, kind of wanted to call it something different but I'll I'll say comma comma um, 25 no am I gonna do it that way uh, sure comma 25, let's stick with that, equals I center of mass, which is the 1 12th ml squared, plus the mass of the meter stick, which is still capital M, times D squared. Now what's D? Well, D is the distance, uh, 25 centimeters, right? But I don't like that. I want to I wanna stick with the variables I have. Uh, I don't really don't want to use any numbers here, right? I think it's more elegant if we don't. So um, we can say how much of the length of the meter stick is that? Well, a meter stick's 100 centimeters, that's 25. So we can say one fourth of L. And we're gonna square that. Okay, so lo and behold then, I parallel axis, can I use the parallel symbol for that? That'll hold up, right? Um, 
You got a square one fourth, so that's going to be one sixteenth. Whoops, don't want to forget my M. I need all the room I can get right now, so I'm going to. All right. And uh, ugh, don't really want to add here. want to. Um, this is kind of in the way now, so I'm going to get rid of all of this. This one twelfth ml squared. Hopefully that's okay with you. Um, I think we're going to have to, this is comma 25. Okay. Get some common denominators here. So um, 16, uh, no, that's not going to work. Um, 24. Mm. Oh boy, that's tricky. One sixteenth and one twelfth, common denominator. Well, it's multiples of 16, 32, 40, oh, 48. Oh, duh. All right. Um, okay, so, uh, all right, so we're going to then common denominator this. So this is going to be 4 over 48, right? Multiply top and bottom by 4, 4 over 4. Um, and uh, this is going to be uh, 3 over 48. Okay. 7 48 ml squared. All right. That's cool, I guess. Um, what did it prove, right? Let's, um... Well, if we think about that, when we were uh, at the center of mass, right, I'll call it I uh, center, it was 1 12th ml squared. So did it get larger or smaller when we moved the axis of rotation out away from the center of mass and you would say well it got it got larger right because um one twelfth is smaller than seven forty eighths right okay so so far so good right so maybe this idea that it's gonna get larger as, as we go out further and further is true well let's try one more right let's do the same exact thing so let's use that same exact formula uh, I parallel axis. And this time, let's go all the way to the end, right? Let's put it at 50. Um, yeah, let's do that. And so now, it's going to be 50 centimeters away, which is 1 half L, right? So we got to say it's equal to, I should probably finish writing my formula. Mm -mm. Okay, so uh, now it's going to be equal to mm, 1 12th ml squared plus, um, this is going to be m, what would this be, 1 half? Yeah. All right, it's gonna look like that, right? All right, so far so good. A little math here. Okay, common denominator um, is 12, so we can rewrite this. Multiply both side or top and bottom by three. Okay. Well, this is going to be nice.
Okay, why does this matter, right? Let's think about it. We said um, that the moment of inertia would get larger as it went out. Is one-third larger than uh, one-twelfth, of course. Is one-third larger than seven-forty-eighths? Yep. Um, what would be one-third and forty-eighths? It'd be sixteen-forty-eighths. So that would be uh, one-third. Uh, so it's definitely larger. And... Um, and the cool thing is, if you rem if you remember what we're what we're saying here, right? So we have these rulers, rulers, meter sticks. We have these meter sticks. Right, and we're gonna go ahead and put that green on there. We have one axis of rotation. Whoops, not there. I don't care about that one anymore. One axis of rotation right here, and one axis of rotation here. And we're saying that um, I center of mass, is equal to 1 12th ML squared. And we're saying that I end of the meter stick, end of meter, yeah, I'll just say end of meter stick. Is equal to one-third ml squared and why is this cool or why is this important because if you check um, page uh, 210 right and you and, and you uh, check for this this um, obviously um, this uh, rectangular object that is being rotated about its center um, you see 1 12th ml squared and if you check, whoops, dang, thought I had the highlighter there. Um, if you check page 210 for uh, an object being rotated out here, right, the same object, you can see that on page 210 that this formula is, um, <clears throat> is uh, one-third ml squared. So just moving that... Uh, I gotta turn off those text uh, <laughs> notifications. Like all my lectures have those popping up. Um, if we move that out, our moment of inertia gets larger. This is the same exact mass, right? It's just the same exact object just being spun about a different end. So you notice that um, the moment of inertia is greater when you spin it about its end. You can feel that, right? The meter stick doesn't want to spin as easily uh, about its end, right? When the axis of rotation is out here versus being right here in the middle, right? And so, uh, yeah, um, good. Let's, uh, let's go back to the, back to um, the lab. All right, and I'll let you, for show these calculations and results below, we just did that. So um, I like the way I did it because I didn't have to use numbers. I think when the students use exact numbers, um, like 100 grams for the mass of the meter stick, that they lose the concepts, right? And so it's way, it's way better for, uh, to understand it, to, to, to work with variables. All right, number 15, how do these results compare with your observations in step 13? Um, all right, so yeah, I'll let you do that. Uh, number 16, write a general statement describing how the location of the axis rotation affects the amount of effort needed to rotate the object and the magnitude of the moment of inertia. All right, you got that one too. All right, hopefully this helped. Um, have a good weekend.